I'm Jake Chalice. You may remember me from such films as The Tool Video and ICW Norfolk to Oriental. February 17th, 2016. And it's a Wednesday. Wednesday Madness. Wednesday Q&A. Wednesday Wedding Day. Wednesday San Francisco something. Okay, first question. So Paulo asked, what did we do for careers before this? Well, Paulo, I lived the exciting life of corporate accounting. I worked for a commodities brokerage, and that's really all I've ever done my entire professional career, which has been longer than a few years. And Jill owns her own design company. And then to plan for this, we saved for about five years, kept ourselves on a tight budget. We have a really good blog about that on our blog, Jack and Jill Adventures, if you guys haven't checked out that. One of our very first blogs was all about how we made this happen for the money. The second question is, what led you into the cruising life? Travel and adventure. Jill and I have always been into going on adventures, mostly sort of, I would call them self-propelled adventures. Um, so climbing, backpacking, I was done a lot of cycling. And the idea of cruising was a pretty foreign idea to us living in Colorado. Maybe I got first got into it by watching like things like the America's Cup, the Vendée Globe, and the Volvo Ocean Race. So we were initially drawn to it because the hard work, the adventure, sort of like the, the freedom of spirit. Not really freedom because weather dictates when and where we go anywhere, but, but freedom nonetheless. What do you like most and what do you like least about the Island Packet 31? And how did you decide to choose that boat? Okay. It took years of research to find the, the island packets. And when I first started looking, I didn't even know island packet was a thing. Um, so after years and years of research and trying to get on as many boats as we could, which really wasn't that many, we were down to island packets or west sails. We knew we wanted a full keel boat that was really tough. Pretty much overbuilt, I would say. These boats are overbuilt. Um, just to make us feel safer and more comfortable. But what uh, won us over on the island packets was the livability space. West Cell 32, they're pretty, they're pretty tight, tight inside. Um, and they're all older. Island Packet has some newer boats out there. Um, but the living space on the Island Packet was great. We're 31 feet long and 11 and a half feet wide. And we looked at bigger boats, went to a boat show in Rhode Island and looked at the 35 and the 37, and they both just seemed like way too much boat for us. So what we like the most about the Island Packet 31 is it's a really tough boat, and the living space is phenomenal. We've never once through this whole time thought, oh, we really want a bigger boat. Even big boats of different manufacturers don't feel as spacious as our boat, or have as much storage space. Um, so. The, the thing we hate the most about the Island Pack of 31 is probably docking. This thing, like, it does not back up worth a damn. People say if you're backing up at four knots, you can have some control. There's really no prop wash. Our rudder is much too small for prop wash. We have a little prop walk, but mostly it is condition dependent. <laughs> so we've taken to uh, trying to enter marinas during slack tide. We always go bow in when we dock because there's no way we'd ever back it in um, and then to back out we normally use the lines warped around stuff and we'll always recruit other cruisers to help us with the lines and then we can normally get out pretty good but really like in almost a year we've only docked this boat a couple times. Jake tell us why you are the way you are. Why I am the way I am. Well let me take you back to 1842, when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Wait, he was on a sailboat too. What was the question again? Oh, oh I am the way I am. I think it's, it's all the beard. The beard just has this power. It has a power over me. It sucked a Jill in, for sure, because she married me. It's all the beard. Is there a way to simplify the amount of boat work needed on the boat? Yeah, definitely. Um, 
if you could eliminate all the complicated boat systems, get by with a little less comforts, use a smaller and simpler boat, um, a boat with but with less work. Um, we have a composting head. We meet people all the time that have their head is broken down, so that's a big thing to eliminate. Limited teak or woodwork. So a, a production boat, a Catalina, a Hunter, they have a lot less of that, so that right there just eliminates a lot of work. No refrigeration, that's a big one. Basically, any moving part is going to break. And the reason they break is because you're in the worst possible environment. Like you're in salt water, sun all the time, all your systems are always rocking around. Yeah, stuff just breaks. You're going to have a lot of boat work. But if you can go lean and mean and a smaller boat, you can have a lot less. Um, you could probably, you know, a small enough boat, you could have an outboard instead of an inboard diesel. I guess the mid-op right break down a lot too. You're going to break down a lot when you go cruising. But as simple as you can do it, less work. Oh, that's the timer for the laundry. What is your dream boat under $100,000? So if you're talking about the base purchase price, so pre-outfitted for cruising, then definitely a Morgan 41 catch with a center cockpit. It's just a real nice, big, heavy, spacious boat, nice living environment, well built, um, lots of sail options for different conditions. Plus they look a bit piratey. We love catches because they look piratey. And anything with the bow sprint we really like too. So if you're talking about a boat that is already cruiser ready and you have $100,000 to spend, so buying a boat, all systems in place, um, as part of that cost, then I would say our exact Island Pack of 31. It would be all the modifications that we've already done. So new electrical, new engine, um, and then we'd add a couple more extras, like a really beefy auto helm, um, do a full enclosure. We just have the sun shades, which are really, really nice, but a full enclosure would be a lot nicer for cold weather. Um, and we would add a propane heater. We have had some really cold times on the boat. What is your sailing experience prior to this? So we first got into sailing about four or five years ago when a friend took us out on their little O'Day day sailor in Colorado, and we loved it immediately. So we decided to make the learning curve a bit shorter, and we took the first two ASA courses with Sunshine Sailing, based out of Marathon, Florida. We did a week-long trip. Jill and I loved it. We came back from that trip, it was the middle of the winter, and we bought a little Coronado 15. And we rebuilt that with the idea of learning how to work with fiberglass and wood. And we sailed that for a couple summers in Colorado. And then we took our third ASA course in the Chesapeake, the 104 Bear, Bo Bear Boat Charter course. Um, we chartered a couple different boats on Lake Michigan and also Lake Dillon in Colorado. And then, then we bought this boat. The solar and wind panels, um, people want to know how you would update, um, if anything, um, and how the current installation is working. That's the one thing on the boat that we got almost perfect the first go. So what we have is we have two 140 watt panels, so t total of 280 watts, and we have the silent wind wind generator, that's, that's what we have. For the most part, we can go about four or five days without needing to start the engine, and generally we move the boat with every, every couple days anyway. When we stay a little bit longer, it tends to run pretty lean. We start turning off the refrigerator at night to save power. So if we could add one more, maybe a 100 watt panel, figure out a place to put that on the boat, then we'd be, to be able to go a lot longer. But we haven't been plugged into shore power since early November when we left Oriental. Um, most of the marinas we've been at don't even have power and we've been able to do just fine. When So the wind is really key. A lot of people don't want to do the wind because it's way more expensive than just the panels. But of course, there's a lot more that goes into a system than just the panels. So we've, got, we've gone off with just our wind for days and days. When we're hunkered down for three or four days in a storm with 30 or 40 knot winds, we'll get 200 amp hours a day just out of our wind generator and our solar will do almost nothing.
But yeah, it's, it's really the perfect amount of power for us. What are your plans after the Bahamas? From the start, we always knew that we didn't want to limit our travel to just sailing alone. Although it seems like we absolutely love kind of torturing ourselves or earning our vacation. We have these friends um, that say you have to earn your fun <laughs> on a sailboat. So we're talking about doing a couple different things. We want to maybe do some backpacking through Europe. Neither Jill and I have been to Europe, so maybe a three-month backpacking trip through Central Europe. We want to hike the Teoror Trail. The Teoror Trail is a 3,000 kilometer trail through the entirety of New Zealand. So sort of like the Appalachian Trail, but in New Zealand. We really want to do some bike packing. I've always loved cycling. Um, I was a big bike commuter for a really, really long time. Um, so we want to do some bike packing at some point in there. Oh, let's see. We do an RV trip through Australia. We learned that you can buy these little camper truck things for just a couple thousand dollars and drive all through Australia. We want to do a climbing trip where we love rock climbing. We've been rock climbing for a huge chunk of our lives. So we got to do a climbing trip maybe in Spain. We'll see how that goes. So those are just sort of a couple of things we're chasing around. But we definitely want to get as much travel and adventure in as we can before we have to go back to real life. <laughs> We've probably bought ourselves about another three years. Two if we're extravagant about it. Anyway, so those are kind of our plans. Last question is from Mom. When are you going to get your life together and get a real job? Uh, and that concludes the Q&A of this edition of Jake and Jill Adventures. <laughs> Jill said just Jake. <laughs> it was fun. We love hearing all of your questions and comments. It's been a lot of fun for us to have so many people involved in our journey. So it, we've gotten plenty of emails. We try to respond to those anytime we have some really good internet so feel free to go to our blog contact us write us any questions you have if you have any tips of good restaurants <laughs> we'll take that too fun places to travel tips the longer we do this the longer we realize that we have no idea what we're doing or where we're going so please help us <laughs>